This is Twit. So I tell you something else that's cool. I think it's cool. And some people out there think it's very not cool. That is the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi 5 16 gigabyte edition. Uh, this just recently got announced in the past few days by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. And uh, it is on sale. The Pi 5 16 gig is on sale for a hundred and twenty dollars and various people have different opinions on that i have heard some people say that that is ridiculously too much money um i have seen people say as a result of this well i guess the last pie i bought was the last pie i'm ever gonna buy i've heard people say well you can get one of those little tiny amazon it's not the it's not the nuke it's not the nuc branded but little tiny amazon intel based computers for for this price um and i get all of that but at the same time it's all kind of silly so if you either cannot comprehend why someone would need a 16 gigabyte raspberry pi or cannot comprehend why someone would willing to be pay to pay 120 dollars for it then the fact of the matter is that this is not the machine for you it was not made for you you were not the target market for it and that's fine. You really don't need to get angry over the fact that there is a market. I, there is a market for this. I promise you, there is a market for this. And Raspberry, the Raspberry Pi Foundation is 100% within their rights to try to make a machine for that market. And so let's talk about the market. And there are two big ones that come to mind. The one that Raspberry Pi themselves talked about is those that are using a Pi 5 as their desktop computer. And having 16 gigs is handy. It is nice to have the full 16 gigs of memory if you're using it as a desktop. That is one market. But the other one, and the one that I think really is probably going to be even more common, is where people want a cheap-ish ARM64 compile uh, target. They want to be able to do something like run GitHub runners on it or some other place where they want to be able to compile a bunch of things. And the fact that it's four core, it, it makes sense to try to do four compiles side by side. And there are times that eight gigs is not quite enough for that. So pushing it up to a 16 gig memory, it makes sense there. Um, Jeff Gearling covered this, and he was also talking about things like if you're using the Raspberry Pi to serve websites, which is a totally legitimate thing to do, Sometimes those websites take a lot of RAM for each of the you know individual sessions that they pull up. And so if you have more than three or four people trying to pull up the same site at the same time, you need to be able to give it more RAM than just eight gigs. So there are reasons and there are legitimate reasons why this thing is going to sell. People are going to want it. Uh, it's It may not be for you and that's okay. <laughs> I was just blown away. Like I saw so much hate from people like, ah, they've given in to corporate greed and you know, the corporate, that's why they become a corporation. That's why they're charging so much for this. Uh, it, it's, it's actually fairly simple. Like there's a, there's a, a really, really simple um, algorithm. So it's like the, the base thing is, is it $40 and then it's $5 per gigabyte. It's something like that. Hmm. Yeah. It's $40 plus $5 per gigabyte of Ram. And that is the price for the entire Raspberry Pi 5 line. And the yeah. base one's 2 gig. It starts at 2 gig. Uh, right. Yeah, I don't think they make a 1 gig Raspberry Pi 5. Yeah, when I saw your title that said uh, uh, about the new Pi 16 and why you shouldn't be upset, I'm like, what? Who's upset? That's people awesome. are People are upset. It's more there. I thought maybe of course people... it's going to cost more. I thought maybe people it were upset because they didn't have enough memory on it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, like, it broke it broke a hundred dollars. That's people just the Raspberry Pi is now a hundred dollars. Ah, I mean, I get it was awesome when the first uh, original one was thirty five dollars. That was awesome. And, and how also, much was the memory then? Weak, <laughs> like baby five twelve. Yeah, bags five twelve, five twelve bags. And the cost of the, of the memory. I think it was DDR3, too. And this is going to be DDR4, correct? I think so. Darn, not DDR5. That's what I'm mad nope. about. Nope, not yet. <laughs> not yet. You got to get mad about it. Get mad about it being DDR4 and not DDR5, right? 
<laughs> yeah, living in the past. Come on. Yeah. No, I'm mad because it doesn't have two 10 gig uh, network ports on it. Even one. Does it have one? It's not 10 gig. No, no. Gig. I think it's just one gig on the network ports. It's got the exposed PCI Express, though, so that you can you can put um, a two and a half gig connection to the PCI Express. Yeah. And yeah. I think the Pi 5 or even 4 and 3 probably can actually support the full one gig, whereas I know the one and maybe two couldn't actually. You could never actually achieve a gig mm-hmm. or even half that, I well, think. Back when those came out, did you need more than a gig? No, I, I couldn't even. You couldn't even achieve a gig there. It was more like four to six hundred megabits per second. So loquacious. Let's let's uh, let's let's deal with this. Loquacious says, for some reason, I thought the Raspberry was designed so that impoverished people would have access to computing. Uh, it was designed to give. Uh, educators a platform to be able to um, put computers in the hands of school kids. That is what it was made for. The original Raspberry Pi was sold for $35. You can right now, if you can find it in stock, you can get a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B with one gigabyte of RAM for $35. It is still out there. That is still a reason. That is still a thing that you can do. And the, the Pi 4 with one gig, you know, as long as you're not trying to watch uh you know 4k video on it you know you're not trying to compile on it it is still a a serviceable machine for fooling around and understanding what um how computers work to learn like you can still you can still emulate um the Oregon trail on the pi 4 with one gig yeah um, and those are all still available yeah but so in, what what has happened here, though, is all of the rest of us that are not a part of education, we have looked at the Raspberry Pi and we've said, this thing is amazing. And for some of us, it's because it's got, you know, GPIO. For some of us, it's because it's it's this big in comparison to, you know, a normal computer. Um, and there's a bunch of different reasons why people just have gone nuts over it. It's good hardware. It's got good support. Uh, so I... I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any shade to be thrown at Raspberry Pi for also building units that make sense for these other use cases. Yeah, you don't have to buy that model. You can stick with the lower end models. Yeah, yeah. I've got the uh, Raspberry Pi five uh, eight gigabyte model because that they didn't have the sixteen gigabyte at the time. You would have bought the sixteen if you could have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, all my, right. My, my gaming system only has 16 gigs of uh, RAM in it. And I realized today that I think I need to update that or upgrade that, but, but it still works fine. I think what people are forgetting, that 16 gigabyte is for people who won't achieve lots of, computer. Lots of Chrome not... tabs. Lots of Chrome tabs. Well, they want a cheap computer <laughs> or they're using the Raspberry Pi for something very specific. That's, you know, it's not general purpose computer, but someone that's compiling, someone that's working on AI stuff, it might be there. Um, but the, the, the biggest thing that I would say is the existence of the 16 gig model for the higher price does not in any way change the availability, the pricing of the cheaper models. Like it, it is entirely unreasonable for that to offend you if you're concerned about the educational element that the Raspberry Pi has always been for. And I wouldn't, I would disagree, Ken. It's not for people who want that cheap. Com- it's not for people who want that cheap computer because you can already get other options, like many people pointed out, at that price range for a cheap computer. Like my Pine Book was $125, uh, but it's lower specs. Uh, and I bet you anything that this is a step to that uh, Pi 500 Pro that Jonathan wants. That is possible. Um, there is a there is a little snippet in here that apparently um, this this is par- was partially possible because Micron gave them a maybe a custom piece of hardware. Um, but I'm I'm sure we won't be able to get the uh, the details on that at least not at the moment. Uh, that would have to come from like Raspberry Pi or an official Micron statement, and they don't tend to make those about so these kind of things. Early next year sounds like it's time to get uh, the uh, who was it from Raspberry Pi you had on Floss Wiki? Uh, Evan Evan Upton. Get him back on. Uh, we we might do that. Um, we could see about doing that. 
Hey, it's Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little clip from our programming at twit.tv. For more, visit our website, twit.tv, or subscribe in your favorite podcast client. There's also a link somewhere down there. <laughs>